Good day, everyone. Can you hear Teacher John? Okay. Today, we're going to start a little bit earlier. Hello. So, please turn off your mic, okay? Even if you want to answer, you may answer with your mics off. Is that all right? Let's sit properly like an army of God. Let's behave, pay attention, and welcome the presence of God, okay? Are you all ready to listen today? Let's all close our eyes and pray. Lord, we thank you for this day that we are able to gather in Zoom and hear your word. We pray that our hearts will be opened, our minds will be engaged, and our spirits will become open to your speaking, to your moving, and to your encounter, O oh Lord. We thank you that everyone is safe and everyone will be behaved and attentive and focused in our lesson today. We welcome your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So are you ready to listen to our lesson? Okay. Do you remember we learned about having a clean and clear mind like the mind of Christ? Do you remember? But we also learned that there's a mind that is full of wrong things and dirty things. And that's the wrong kind of mind to have. Have you ever experienced having a mind that's so fuzzy you can't seem to understand things? You can't seem to understand the lesson anymore when you're listening to your teacher. And you can't seem to understand what teacher John or teacher Joshua is saying or what your mommy and daddy is saying. Have you ever experienced this before? When your mind's all fuzzy and there's so many things and you're confused? Okay, if you haven't experienced it, good. But if you have, let's learn how we can overcome this. In order to remove the confusion and the fuzzy things in our mind, we need to pray. And we need to read the word of God. Because it is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit that builds in materials inside our mind. But we also learn that social media can also build our mind. And when we do and listen and watch too much social media, the frequency we get from the internet, from YouTube, from Facebook, from games, from wrong movies, from wrong articles, from wrong videos. It can damage our mind. So we need to listen to the word of God because it's the one that builds materials in our mind. But when we read the word of God and also get addicted to gadgets and wrong things, it also sends a frequency to our mind. So our mind becomes a mixture. It means you take the good thing and you also take the bad thing. And when the bad thing and the good thing mix together, it damages our mind. So it doesn't build our mind. It's, it feels like your mind is built, but actually there's also wrong things in your mind. So eventually, a mixture will collapse. Say, a mixture will collapse. When our mind is a mixture, and the Holy Spirit wants to tell us all about the great and beautiful things about the kingdom of God, we cannot hear it because our mind is fuzzy. It's because of the mixture in our mind that our mind is confused and fuzzy. So if you don't want to be confused, if you don't want your mind to be fuzzy, it means your mind should not be a mixture. And what makes our mind a mixture? When we take the good and when we take the bad also. So to make our minds clean and not confused, we should only take what is good. So how exactly we should do this? 
Do you remember the disciples and the people of God when they were baptized by the Holy Spirit? Do you remember the story? Put a thumbs up if you remember. If you don't, it's all right. But do you remember that you are also baptized by the Holy Spirit? Are you baptized by the Holy Spirit? Right. You speak in tongues and you can talk to the Holy Spirit, right? So it means to make our minds clear when it's a mixture. We need to pray aloud, okay? When you pray aloud, you don't pray like, Rama, Mama, sugar. Like you're afraid that they will hear it. You need to be bold and confident that you will pray so God can hear you, right? So that your mind and spirit can also receive that frequency of prayer, okay? You can go to your room and lock the door so that, that um, if you're afraid others will hear you, you can lock yourselves in your room, okay? And then you can pray. And then you pray many times. It means not only when you wake up or when you are about to eat. You can pray in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, and even in between those times. And you pray a lot. It means when you pray, you're not just going to say a few words like, Lord, thank you for this day, in Jesus' name, amen. And then you run, and then you use your gadgets right away. When you say pray a lot, you pray about the many things that God put inside your heart. If God put inside your heart to pray about your mommy and daddy, pray for them. Pray for your school also. Pray for your future. Pray for your brothers and sisters if you have. Pray for your lolo and lola if you have. So there are many things we can pray for. We can also pray for the weather. We can also pray for, for example, you're taking care of a plant and you want it to grow. We can also pray for that. You can pray for many things, but always pray for what inside your heart. Again, please turn off your mic. Thank you. And pray until it becomes natural. It means we should not be shy about praying. We need to make it something normal. So you pray again and again and again until it becomes natural. Sleeping is natural. Eating is natural. Walking is natural. Talking is natural. So praying can become part of us if we do it all the time and if we practice it every day. Are you still here? Are you still listening to Teacher John? Now, after we pray and when we pray, we connect our spirit, our heart, and our mind together. How do you do that? It means when you want to pray to God, whatever it is that you want to pray, you need to see it in your mind. If you want to pray for your mommy and daddy, you need to see in your mind your mommy and daddy. And when our mind and heart and spirit connects, we can send a frequency to the Holy Spirit. And we remember, I believe we already learned that when we send a frequency to the Holy Spirit, He hears us and He knows that we want to change, that we want to remove all the wrong things in our mind. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He takes the materials from Jesus Christ in heaven and He gives it to us by frequency and builds it into our life, into our spirit. And because of that, we become empowered by the Holy Spirit. And when we become strong in our inner man because of the Holy Spirit, we now have capacity and strength to remove all the wrong things in our mind and our mind will no longer be a mixture. So it becomes clean and clear again. And so when the Holy Spirit comes to talk to us and tell us great things, we can now hear it. And you can see that our mind becomes protected also because we accept and we take the good things from God. Are you understanding so far? So when our mind becomes protected, like there's a force field around our mind, we can now repel. There's like a shield in our mind. 
when all these wrong things try to come at us, we can say, no, I don't want you anymore. And it won't enter our mind anymore. Do you want to have a mind like this? There's a shield from the Holy Spirit. So like the ants who prepared before winter, and when winter came, they have food to eat, and they have a home that's warm for themselves. And like the three little pigs who prepared and built their houses, and when the wolf came, only the one with the right materials stood. So when the wolf came, look, he has a chef's hat. It means he was planning to eat the three little pigs. But because they all went inside the brick house, the right material, he can't get them. And he's so tired trying to get them and blow the house down. Just like the story of the ant and grasshopper and the three little pigs, we need to prepare our spirit and build our spirit up to have Christ as the foundation in our life. Say, Christ is the foundation. And we also need to build our mind to only have good things from the Word of God and from the Holy Spirit. Say, the mind of Christ. So that our minds will be protected and our life will be protected. So it's not only in your mind that you get protection, but it's in everything that you have in life. Your school, your mommy and daddy, your house, in everything that you have, your health. So in the future, when sometimes things get difficult, and you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. And sometimes it can get confusing because you build your spirit up to have Christ as the foundation and you build your mind to have a mind like Christ. You will always choose to go to God and listen to his word. And God will show you. Can you see this little girl? God will show you the great and beautiful things that he has in his kingdom. And you will always be protected and you will always be safe. So are you ready to listen to teacher Joshua and learn more about the mind of Christ? Okay. So remember, if you feel sleepy, just stretch. Okay. Don't sleep. If you feel kind of bored, you just have to decide and say, I want to learn more about God and just sit down properly okay all right so before we begin our lesson let's do what we always do okay what's this let's open up our hearts to receive the word and spirit of God let's engage so that our mind will only receive the good coming from God and we will learn to be strong to say no to all the wrong things that wants to enter our mind. And we need to expand our capacity so that God can give us more and more and more and more so that we can grow taller and taller and taller and taller in the spirit. And last, we need to connect so that whatever frequency the Holy Spirit is sending, we can receive it in our spirit and in our mind. Okay, so let's posture ourselves and let's behave like an army of God. Are you ready? Okay, let's all welcome Teacher Joshua. So good day, everybody. Good evening to all. And let's continue to communicate with the Holy Spirit so that it becomes natural to us to connect to God. All right, can we do that? Let's speak in tongues. I'll, I'll remind you again that it's not about the outside. It's about the inside. Okay? It's about your spirit. It's not about the outside. So even if you are sleepy, don't be sleepy. You need to reactivate your spirit. And we need to rise up so that we don't become sleepy. Okay? So can we increase our capacity? All right? So listen well and follow me if you can. Okay? 
So we will speak in tongues. Rokota baba sokoto koto ko shikya kara kada baba yeko rokoto ko rokoto baba yande. Rekoto ko sokota baba yeko to ko rokoto baba shikya kara kada baba yeko rokoto baba yondo. Raka da baba yeko rokoto baba shikya kara kada baba soko rokoto baba yande. Yeko rokoto baba rokoto ko shikya kara kada baba yeko rokoto baba yanda. Rako do go sokoro go da baba yeko ro go da baba shikya kara go da baba yeko ro go da baba yande. Lord O God, we pray O Lord for the select arrows O God right now O Lord that they will continually increase into their capacity, increase O Lord into their spiritual hunger O Lord and thirst for you for more of your word O Lord. We pray O Lord that their bodies will be governed. We pray O Lord that they will have another higher capacity O Lord to receive your word O Lord and to grasp. O oh Lord, the revelation, O oh Lord, that you want them to receive in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for their spirits to be energized. We pray, O oh Lord, that their spirit will continually grow as they receive your word, O oh Lord. And we pray, O oh Lord, that they will continually be strong and they will not be distracted and they will always have a clean, clear, pure and uncontaminated mind like Christ, O oh Lord. They will grow stronger and they will receive your word more and more, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, that they will pay attention more, O oh God. And we pray, O oh Lord, that they will receive, O oh Lord, the understanding, O oh God, as they receive your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, okay? Posture yourself, okay? Do you see me? Do, am I sitting like this? So we need to posture ourselves, okay? Don't look funny. Sit well. Do you want Christ to see you in a funny way? No, we need to posture ourselves well, okay? So we need to pay attention well. And okay, now that you're ready, listen well, okay? All right, so I'll share screen. So now our new topic is the mind of Christ, part two. So we talked about the mind of Christ, okay? So posture yourself and pay attention. We talked about the mind of Christ that we need to be clean so that there's no negative thoughts that's coming into our mind, right? But that's not enough. Having a clean, clear, pure, and uncontaminated mind is not enough. We also need to build the word of God inside our minds. So why do we need that? Because we need to make our mind strong. That's why we need to build the word of God in our minds. In this lesson, we will know what those bricks are. What bricks are they? So, okay, we'll find out what bricks are they. One of them is humility. That's the part of the characteristic of Christ. Humility. What is humility, teacher Joshua? Humility is being gentle, meek. Honorable, respectful, meaning you're respectful to others, respectful to your parents. So that's Christ. That's one of the characteristics of Christ, being meek and gentle and honorable. And we know that we need to be like Jesus Christ. And like Jesus Christ, he also kept himself humble. So we need to follow Jesus Christ how to be humble. What do you mean by being humble? Being gentle, respectful, okay? So Jesus is the son of God, right? He's the king of kings and lord of lords. But did you know that even though he's the king, he didn't show himself that he's the king. He didn't become bossy. What do I mean by bossy? Being bossy is like this. Being proud is like, okay, you go there, you do that. But Jesus didn't impose of being bo bossy. He remained himself humble. Even though he's the king of kings and the lord of lords, he didn't become bossy. So likewise, like to you, don't be bossy like that. Okay? Yeah, you, you go there. Yeah, you, you do that. Yeah, yeah. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Okay, when somebody prays you, for example, wow, you're so good at dancing. You're so good at singing. You're so good at drawing. And later on, you become proud. Don't be bossy and don't think of yourself that you're so good. Don't be proud. 
Now you're going to say to yourself, if somebody praised you, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I'm so good. I'm already so good at this. So be careful. That's being proud. That's being arrogant. All right. So you have to be careful that we always keep our posture right by becoming humble, like Jesus Christ. So why? Because being proud and arrogant is not right. You can come into a situation where you don't like people correcting you. Hmm. That's being proud, and that's not good. Jesus Christ modeled himself, even though he's the king, he didn't show himself to become bossy. He didn't say, oh, I'm already so good. Why do I need that? Jesus Christ kept himself humble. Remember, Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He didn't show himself to become bossy. And look at this. Jesus Christ and with his disciples. You know what he's doing? Jesus Christ is the one that's washing the feet of the disciples. And that's not a king's job. That's a servant's job. And he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What is he doing? He's making himself humble. Okay? He's not proud. He's not showing himself, mm, I'm the king. You go get me a chair and give me some food. No, he served others. He's very considerate and he's not selfish. So do you see what Jesus is doing? He offered service to the disciple by washing their feet. And that's not a king's job, but he still did it. So next. Likewise, when we are very talented, for example, we have gifts, skills, and talents. Maybe you have the gift of playing the piano, the gift of singing, the gift of drawing, and the gift of dancing, and many other talents. But even if we are so good, yes, thank God that we are good, we need to be careful of our hearts, okay? We need to make sure that when people praise us, wow, you're so good at drawing. Wow, you're so good at dancing. Wow, you're so good at singing. We need to be careful that we don't become proud. I'm so good. I can already do this. Yeah, I already know that. That's being proud, all right? Like this, mm, I'm so good. Yeah, everybody likes me. So don't be proud, okay? Being proud is not by action. It's in the heart. So whatever that is in your heart, make sure that it is right. Don't be proud. Like, what do I mean by proud? Don't show off, okay? Don't show off. Showing things is different. Showing off is different from showing, okay? Showing off is being proud. Yeah, I'm already good. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So we have to be careful. Instead, when people praise you, when people say, wow, you're good at this, you're good at that, you say, you keep in your heart, you imitate Christ by becoming humble. You said, okay, yes, but thank God that I have this gift because this gift belongs to the Lord. You don't keep it to yourself that, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm so good now. So watch out of pride and always remain in the posture of being humble. Look at Jesus Christ. He's already the best. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yet he kept himself humble, right? Jesus is the one who drove out demons. He's a great mighty man of stature with a great spirit, all knowing and all understanding, but he kept himself humble. Even though he's so good, but he didn't claim it to himself, I'm already good. But he always remained himself teachable. And Jesus is not selfish. You see this? He's, all, he's eating the cookies all by himself. So likewise, don't be selfish, but be considerate to others. Being considerate is you care about other people more than yourself. So that's Jesus Christ. So that's being humble. Okay? And Jesus also practiced obedience when he was a child. Jesus also practiced obedience when he was a child. Now, we all know obedience, and in obedience, we know that there is an instruction. There's an instruction that says one word is enough to obey. Now, what does one word is enough to obey mean? That means when your parents say, all right, that's enough, enough using gadgets, give me the iPad. So that means that 
one word. You don't need to say, mm, I don't want, I don't want to. Can we do it later? So whenever your parents say one time, you need to obey and you need to follow. That's one word is enough to obey. So that's an example. When your parents said, okay, give me the iPad now, time's up. All right. That's one word is enough to obey. And you obey. So obey well because that's the Christ's way. Jesus Christ was very obedient to his parents, and therefore we also need to follow Jesus Christ. Because if you're not obedient and you don't apply the one word is enough to obey, you have struggle. See, you don't want to give the iPad. That's just an example, okay? So you don't want to give the iPad. You're struggling, and your parents said, give me the iPad, and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> so that's not following one word is enough to obey. And then you cry, and then you fall down to the ground. So if you see yourself that you're doing this, let's change it, okay? You don't have to go down to the floor and cry. It's better to obey. It's better to listen to your parents. Look, is crying on the floor will help you? Will crying on the floor help you? No, right? What happened? You just made your clothes dirty. So what do you need to do? Obey. Just obey. One word is enough to obey. Now I'll tell you why. Because look at this. If you don't obey, and you still kept on using the gadgets, what will happen? Bad things will happen. Bad results will happen. Let me prove it to you. If you keep on using the gadgets and you don't listen to your parents, eventually, little by little, your eyes are gonna get damaged. You see that? That's just two hours. But still, little by little, it damages your eye. And what happens next? You have glasses. Well, you say, mm, well, glasses is okay for me, but did your eyes become better or did it become worse? See, it became worse than before. So we need to listen to our parents because they know what's best for us. In the verse here in the Bible, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise so that it may go well with you, that you may enjoy long life. Okay, when you obey, there's long life. What happens when you disobey? Short life. So it's up to you, long life or short life? Long life, I want to live a long life. So what do you need to do if you want a long life? You obey. So look at the eyes, just the eyes, just the eyes, not the life, okay? Did it become better or worse if you disobey? worse right yeah it became, it became worse so we need to obey our parents i'll give you an example another example for example your parents said don't eat a lot of candies don't eat a lot of candies and don't buy candies and this girl disobeyed just an example it bit the candy ate a lot of candy and what happens if you keep on disobeying what happens bad results will come what happens? Cavities. Do you want your teeth to be like this or worse than this? No, right? So when, you, when we disobey, bad things happen. Look at this person on the next, on the upcoming picture. This one obeyed. It didn't eat a lot of candies. Okay, I'm not saying candies is not entirely good for you, but a little amount is okay, but don't eat a lot. So this one obeyed. So which one will you follow? The one who disobeyed or the one who, who obeyed? The one who obeyed, of course. So let's keep in mind that when our parents says, okay, enough using the gadgets, we need to listen. We need to obey. How and why? I mean, why? Because Jesus Christ obeyed. So we need to follow Jesus Christ. We need to be obedient too. And look, good results come if we obey and bad results will come if we disobey. Another example, don't eat a lot of chips. Chips is okay, but don't eat a lot. Don't eat a lot of it. But this girl disobeyed again. So what happens? 
stomach ache. <laughs> See, bad results always happen if we disobey. So we learned that we need to always obey so that wrong things won't happen to us, okay? It's a lesson to learn because with obedience, there is long life always. What if she ate a lot of chips more than that? It'll hurt his, her tummy even more and she could go to the hospital. So it does bring short life. Disobedience brings short life. So long life, short life. Long life, of course. So we need to obey. Also, now that we know obedience and disobedience, it is also disobedience. If, we, if our mother sell, tells us something or our dad, and you say, yeah, 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 later, later, later. Okay? Delayed obedience is still disobedience. For example, your mom calls you. Uh, can you do this for me, please? And you say, no, 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 I, I'll do that later. If you are indeed busy in doing something, then explain. Tell your parents is it okay that I'll do my modules first? Is it okay that I'll do my online studies first, mom or dad? If they said, okay, then okay. You communicated well. Communicate. Talk to them. But if they say it's urgent, we need to do this, then we need to obey. Again, I repeat, communicate. We need to talk to our parents. If we have something to do, if we are busy, then we need to explain. But if they really need help, then we should follow them. We need to obey. As much as possible, we need to obey quickly. Do not delay your obedience. Do not say, yeah, yeah, later. If you are busy, then explain it to them that you have something to do. And if they say yes, then okay. So delayed obedience is still disobedience. So that's not right. Also, when your parents call you, keep in mind that when you're wearing headphones too, you need to be mindful if they're calling you, all right? Do you want your parents to keep on shouting at you while you're wearing the headphones? No, right? So make sure that you're mindful even if you're using your headphones. Mindful of your parents' voice, okay? So if you're not being mindful, be mindful next time, okay? And do not delay your obedience. Keep in mind, listen to your parents well, obey. One word is enough to obey. And we always need to be humble. What do I mean by being humble? Not being proud or bossy. Yeah, I'm already good at that. Yeah, I already know that. But we need to always be gentle. We need to always stay teachable. Whenever someone says, wow, you're so good at drawing, then you say, thank you. And you accept the compliment. You say, yes, but don't be bossy. Yeah, I'm so good. That's being proud. But be humble. Give back the glory unto God. Keep it to yourself and pray that thank you, Lord, for this gift. This gift belongs to you. And thank you, oh God, for helping me grow this. And I will keep myself humble in my heart like Jesus Christ. Keep yourself humble and don't be proud. Because if you're proud, you already, you'll always say, yeah, I already know that. Yeah, you'll say, I'm already so good. So keep yourself humble like this person, like Christ. This is the characteristic of Jesus Christ. Because even though he's the son of God, he always kept himself humble. Okay? So that's it. So have, do we learn the, our lesson for today? So yes, keep yourself humble. Don't be bossy. Don't be, yeah, I already know that. I already know this. So be humble. Be gentle. Give thanks to God and obey. Because if you disobey, bad things will happen to you. Do you, do you remember the teeth? Mm. Which one will you follow? The one that obeyed or the one that disobeyed? The one that obeyed, right? All right. The one that obeyed. Yeah, okay, so let's pray. Let's pray, okay? Lord, we thank you, O oh Lord, for this meeting, O oh God, and we pray, O oh Lord, that these children will continually grow in spirit and to receive your word more, O oh Lord. Increase their capacity, O oh God, and increase their understanding, O oh Lord, that as they continually walk in you and to your word, they will rise up and grow up in their spirits, O oh Lord. We pray that they will practice this, that they will continually grow obedient to their parents, and they will keep themselves humble, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, that they will continually grow strong in the Holy Ghost. 
continually grow strong, O Lord, and staying honorable and respectful to their parents so that they will have long life and not a short life, O God. We thank you, O God, for this day. We thank you, O Lord, for this evening, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So thank you, and keep on increasing your capacity and your ah. spirit. Hello, guys. Go on to Teacher Joan. Okay, everyone. Did we learn a lot today? Yes. Mute your mic. Get done. Mute your mics. We're not yet done. Okay. So whatever you learned today, for example, you are shocked and you're like, "Oh, I shouldn't eat candy if I want my teeth to be beautiful." And of course, if you don't want your eyes to be so red and damaged, you should listen to your mommy and daddy when they say stop using the gadget. So all the things you learn today, you need to practice it tomorrow and throughout the week so that it gets built in our spirit. That's how we build our life and our mind. Whenever you're listening to Teacher Joan and Teacher Joshua and something goes in your mind like, uh-huh, that's what I should do. Or you're like, oh, no, now I know what to do. Whatever it is you learned today, you do it, okay? You don't memorize it. You don't just listen. You do it. It means... If you used to cry and throw a tantrum and say, no, I don't want to take my, I don't want to stop using the gadget. Because you learn and you say, oh, now I know what to do. It means you need to change. Okay? Say, I, I need to change. I will change. Okay. So whatever you learn today, what will you do? Will you just memorize it? No, you will do it. Say, I will do it and I will change. <laughs> and when you do it, it gets built into your spirit. It gets built in your mind and you become stronger in the spirit and you become a better person. Yeah. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. And we'd like to keep reminding you to always be strong, always pray, and always carry yourself well. It means... Be part of the army of God, okay? All right? So, take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.